Black Mirror is back with six amazing new episodes that will truly blow your mind. First one is a major Inception-esque thriller starring Salma Hayek and Annie Murphy. While this one does not feature any creatures or monsters that we usually cover on this channel, what it does give to audiences is a look at what the future of streaming and entertainment can become if we're not careful enough with technology. Intrigued? Sit back and enjoy as we break down all the details of Joan is Awful, along with explaining that insane ending. But before we go into our explanation, we have a very special Small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. Oh, hey, hey, I think we should turn this off. Well, actually, this I'll, is... I want to keep watching. No, no. no. Clark, Annie Murphy, who gave one of the best comedy performances of the previous 10 years as Alexis Rose on Shit's Creek, is the focus of the first episode of season six. Given the current discussion surrounding AI and art, it makes for a fascinating viewing and, like many Black Mirror episodes, one that hits a bit too close to home. The opening scene of Joan is Awful shows us a typical day in the life of Joan Tate, a regular everyday woman with a comfortable position at a music streaming service named Sonical. She may live a pleasant life because of her cushy job, but she no longer truly cares about her work having become disillusioned by the corporate drudgery. Deep down, she would much prefer to pursue her original ambition of running her own copy shop rather than a position that involves imposing directives from the board, something that she often feels terrible doing since it involves firing hard working people and making tough calls. Joan also feels a similar way about her profession as she does about her fiancé, Krish, whose dullness is so suffocating that it even permeates the food he makes, bland and tasteless. We watch as Joan recounts her daily life and feelings to her therapist, contrasting her stable but unattractive relationship with Krish with the tumult and fervor of her connection with her ex-boyfriend, Mac. After her session, she finally gives in and meets up with Mac because he has been texting her and is in town for a few days. The sexual tension between the two is evident and they kiss, but Joan pushes him away, seemingly putting a stop to her feelings and interactions with Mac because she wants to stay with Krish regardless of their lack of chemistry. However, this story is more significant than simply losing the one she thought was her soulmate. Joan feels completely out of control in both her personal and professional life as she is being directed by some fixatious script. She doesn't feel like the main character in her own life story, as she says to her therapist. However, we all know, be careful what you wish for. Little did she know that she was going to end up becoming the main character and in all the wrong ways. This is when we begin to realize what this episode is actually about. When she gets home that night, she and Krish open up Streamberry, which is obviously the episode's version of Netflix, complete with a large red S logo and a distinctive Tadum sound upon launching the application. They quickly discover that there is a new show on Streamberry called Joan is Awful, with Salma Hayek playing a character who is remarkably similar to Joan in terms of career, hairstyle, and demeanor. The TV Joan is, if anything, just a little bit dramatized, leaning more heavily towards her sporadic unlikability and professional hardness. It seems that the entire series is based on her life in an alarmingly up-to-date manner, and Joan begins to freak out as she watches her day's events be chronicled on Streamberry with Salma Hayek as the lead in the story. Everybody in Joan's life has a television counterpart, including her fiancé, Krish, her assistant, the employee she dismissed earlier in the day, and even the people she interacts with on a regular basis. Everyone Joan knows begins getting notifications about the new show dropping, and they all instantly turn on the same program and watch Joan's full day unfold on their screens. This results in the obvious. Chris finds out about her interactions with Mac and their secret meeting. The episode even portrays Joan and Mac kissing, which makes Chris furious. He then proceeds to pack his bags and leave her in the middle of the night, leaving her all alone to deal with the aftermath of this seemingly real show. The Joan is Awful episode comes full circle at the conclusion of the evening show showing Kate Blanchett as the actress portraying Joan in the performance within the show within the show, which was extremely Inception-esque that will definitely leave audiences scratching their heads. The following day, Joan loses her job as a result of her on-screen persona leaking sensitive company information, and her situation only gets worse. No lover, no job, and essentially ostracized by everyone she ever knew. Joan has a breakdown. This entire time, she is unable to figure out why there is a show about her, how the streaming company 
she's able to film and stream the happenings in real time, and most importantly, how she can stop this. In an attempt to sue Streamberry, she then meets with her attorney, which only serves to highlight how screwed up her situation is. She inadvertently gave up her life's rights and also gave the algorithm permission to edit and add conversation and take creative freedom for dramatic effect when she first signed up for Streamberry and accepted the terms and regulations as a viewer. Further, she is also unable to sue Salma Hayek for using her likeness because, in actuality, a computerized likeness of Salma Hayek made to look like Joan is used to play her in the show. The entire program is created using computer graphics and it combines AI-generated scripts with cutting-edge deepfake technology to produce fresh episodes every night, utilizing photos obtained from actors like Salma. This obviously leads to her having a mental breakdown, and she lands up at Mac's hotel room for some comfort. However, it is a horrible encounter since Mac is preoccupied with how he will seem on the show and is unable to engage in sexual activity. However, as a result of the circumstance, Joan has an idea. She decides to use Salma Hayek's digital likeness to stage an extremely unfavorable scene in order to force the actual Salma Hayek to make Streamberry comply and shut the show down for good. Considering that the show follows her life and focuses on the bad parts specifically, she decides to act shamelessly in hopes that her actions were such that Salma Hayek would not want her, even her digital image to replicate it. She achieves this by overindulging in hamburgers, ingesting laxatives, and disrupting a church wedding while wearing a cheerleader outfit and squatting in the aisle with a tattooed penis on her forehead. She is arrested for this behavior, and while Salma does take note getting upset by the fact that her face was used to replicate the horrible act on Streamberry, even her status is not enough to shelve the show. Instead, when Salma complains to her attorney, she receives the same general response that Joanne did for her. Since she officially consented to everything, she had no other choice but to disregard and ignore this deep fake heretic abomination, legally even if she wasn't able to do anything about it. However, this leads to an exciting partnership between these two women, Annie Murphy as Joan and Salma Hayek as Streamberry Joan, who collude to try and come up with a way to put an end to this madness for good. However, before we dive deep into to the climax, it is crucial to understand what Streamberry actually is. Edited programs that would normally take months to make, such as... What is Streamberry? Streamberry is an entertainment giant just like its real-life counterpart. Streamberry is not just a streaming platform, it is also a major content machine, churning out news shows, movies, and other types of content at a breakneck speed. Further, Black Mirror has always pointed out the dangers of technology and thus Streamberry goes far ahead of what Netflix does and practically hides complete licensing agreements for the stories and likeness of real people to sign up to the platform in their lengthy terms and conditions. Being at a far advanced stage in comparison to Netflix, and other streaming giants of today, Streamberry heavily uses artificial intelligence to create and produce content for consumption at lightning fast speeds. In fact, their modus operandi is explained when Joan goes to her attorney to figure out a way to get Streamberry to pull the plug on the show. As a subscriber to the streaming platform, Joan agreed to the massive list of terms and conditions without having read them as most, if not all of us, usually do. In that arrangement, she pretty much gave Streamberry exclusive permission to create a show on her and also allowed them to change or intensify events and happenings in her regular life for the sake of dramatic purposes. The key in all of this is the computer, a mysterious quantum computer at the stream Streamberry headquarters which uses artificial intelligence to create the show. The way this works is that the Streamberry app on Joanne's phone continuously monitors what the actual Joanne does and then creates a CGI show that presents a dramatized version of her show. Further, Salma Hayek, a Mexican actress, signed an agreement with the streaming giant to let Streamberry utilize her face and create shows where a digital likeness of her plays characters, hence the actress portraying her is not even the actual Salma Hayek. Further, towards the end of the episode, we also meet Mona Javadi, the CEO of Streamberry, who further explains while giving an interview that the idea behind New Age content is to be able to monitor people and create content in real time that is both personal and relatable to the viewers of Streamberry. Thus, they are able to create shows like this for every single person subscribed to the Streamberry service. Also, the streaming giant purposely chose to focus on the negative aspect of people's lives since they had previously piloted more positive shows which have received terrible responses. No one wants to watch a picture-perfect happy life. Thus, they realized showing the darker, harsher, and unlikely likable parts of people captivated and drew audiences in. Almost like a roadside accident, it is horrible, but one simply is unable to look away from it. What can be understood here is that Streamberry is streaming tech taken to an extreme also. This is not the only thing this mega streaming service appears in Black Mirror Season 6. Did you manage to spot it in Episode 2 as well? Tell us in the comment section down below. If you call security, I will break your arm. Don't think I won't. The Ending Twist 
Salma and Joan decided to break into Mona Javadi's office since they believe that destroying the computer is the only way to shut the show down. As they break into the office of the Streamberry CEO to disrupt the quantum computer that contains the algorithm, Joan and Salma's alliance makes for an intriguing heist vibe. Salma Hayek acts as the distraction using her two status to dupe the young starry-eyed secretary while Joan sneaks in from the back and two of them successfully make it to Mona Javi's office. And here is where things begin to unravel. Joan notices that on the various screens in the control room, there is another Joan who looks just like her and is evidently being recorded by Streamberry. And this is when it all comes crashing down. Stay with me here. It turns out that Joan, played by Annie Murphy, is not the real source Joan whose life is being turned into a series. The reality that we have been witnessing all throughout the episode is actually not the real one. As of right until then, what the audiences have been viewing is a CGI replica of the real Joan. We see the first stage of the simulation in the Black Mirror episode, where Joan is played by the digital likeness of actress Annie Murphy. The simulation's level 2 actress is Salma Hayek who plays Annie Murphy's Joan, and the level 3's actress is Kate Blanchett who plays Salma Hayek's Joan. Truly Joanception. All three levels of the simulation experience the events we're seeing at different levels of intensity. Intensity. Because of this, the Joan we follow in the episode chooses to completely destroy the computer despite the fact that doing so could kill her because she is, after all, a simulation. She was aware that since she was so close to doing it, the real Joan wanted it to be done. It was a choice she realized was out of her hands because she was already acting in the same way as the source Joan in the original reality. She does realize that as soon as she smashed the computer, all the levels of simulations would be destroyed, leaving only one source Joan alive, and that is precisely what she did. Did. The final reality that is still left standing is the one with Joan as the real source which is revealed when Joan smashes the computer. It turns out that in the actual unsimulated reality, source Joan worked hand in hand with Annie Murphy and not Salma Hayek. In fact, Annie was the one who provided her digital likeness for level 1 of the simulation of Joan's life. The two of them destroyed the computer together and thus Joan and Annie were both taken in by the police because of what they have done so and broken the law in the process. The ending, however, is not as bad because despite being detained, the two of them were only put on house arrest and went on to be fast friends. The real Joan even got to open her own copy shop that she had always dreamt about. All is well that ends well, eh? Marvelous Verdict Joan is Awful is a great opener for this new season of Black Mirror. Well, it is not as visually disturbing as many other episodes, both in Season 6 and seasons that have come before this one, this one really hits home. The idea that maybe one day this could happen to any of us is what is jarring. Black Mirror's success in general is thanks to the fact that it brings to attention unique and often troubling issues that don't seem to be very far off from where we are today. Technology is advancing at a rapid rate, and with it, so are people's fears about it and what comes next. The discussion in the limelight, thanks to this episode, is that can a streaming service like Streamberry, which somehow records what happens to you during the day through your phone and makes an artificial intelligence generated series based on your life, exist in the near future? And how likely is it to actually happen? Well, as far as the possibility of generating programs in real time taken from real people's lives is concerned, it definitely can be possible due to ever-developing technology. In theory, our phones can likely watch us through the camera and even listen to what we say through the microphone. Though it hasn't been confirmed in practice, it is is technically possible that the applications that we have on our smartphones today are already using these methods, often deemed as unethical, to push advertising. And someday, not too far from now, artificial intelligence will likely develop to the point where it can create shows like Joan is Awful far faster than they are able to produce shows like Black Mirror, considering that they would no longer have to shoot with real people. Thus, while technology is not yet there, we do know that its capabilities are constantly evolving. However, and you can breathe a sigh of relief here, the legal right of any entertainment or production service to carry out this kind of an invasion of privacy and hide it as part of its terms and conditions is what is highly unlikely. Every human being has a certain inviolable right, such as those relating to freedom and privacy, which cannot take a back seat, especially when one unknowingly agrees to the terms and conditions of a certain service. In fact, many countries across the world are already enacting strict laws surrounding cyber crimes and other technology-related areas where people's freedoms are at risk. Therefore, it is extremely unlikely that what we see in the first episode of Season 6 of Black Mirror, Joan is awful, could really take place sometime in the future. With that being said, this episode will still send shivers down your spine as you watch Joan completely lose her mind and then subsequently her life as all is laid bare for people to consume on a streaming platform. Black Mirror Season 6 is currently streaming on Netflix. Be sure to check it out and tell us your favorite episode in the comments section down below.